So part two still coming up, but is that the first time you sat down and watched that whole part one? Absolutely is. What'd you think? I, I, first of all, I'm, I agree with Vince. The, the unfortunate, the unfortunate part of this whole story was that Vince was convinced that I was going to somehow convince Bret Hart to bring the belt over to WCW and drop the WC or drop the, drop the WWF belt in the trash, just like I had done with Medusa. I was going to say, and, where would he get such a crazy idea? Yeah, I know. I don't blame him f- for having that concern. Yeah. What Vince didn't know was as a result of the lawsuit, the Scott Hall, Kevin Nash lawsuit, which was still ongoing at that point in time, there were so many limitations on what I could do and couldn't do with regard to WWF trademarks, copyrights, all that. So I was, I, I was hand, I was hogtied and handcuffed in, in terms of that. There was no way I could have done it, but Vince couldn't have known that. Right. Right. My, my reputation preceded me. Sure. At that point. It wasn't going to happen. I had, when Brett and I talked about the situation going into Montreal, Brett was concerned that Vince was going to ask him to drop the belt in Montreal. And I said, well, Brett, it doesn't matter. You're Brett Hart. Yes. You're not Brett Hart with a WWF belt and some nobody without it. You're Fre- Brett freaking Hart. Yes. It doesn't matter at all to me. And I encouraged him to just do business. Not because I was as concerned about the time honored tradition as right. Vince McMahon apparently was, because he mentioned that, I think, four times in a that interview. Yeah. That wasn't it. It's just that it wasn't an issue for me. I knew I, number one, I couldn't do anything with the belt, even if I wanted to legal, wouldn't let me W Turner legal would not let me. It was not an, and I knew that going in, it was not an issue. And in my heart, it just didn't matter whether he did the job or not. Brett and here's where Brett screwed Brett. I don't even think it was about dropping a belt. It was dropping the belt in Montreal because Brett was convinced that he was a Canadian hero of such significant magnitude that it would have a devastating impact on who I don't know other than Brett, because Brett's vision of himself as the Canadian hero was going to be compromised. If he did the, did the job in Montreal, which I think is silly. And I, as I listened to that interview and look, Vince can be as convincing as anybody I've ever met. Yes. He is amazing when he wants to be. And there was a little bit of an, an unusual charm in Vince McMahon in that sit down. But I agree with him. Brett should have done what Brett should have done in Montreal and as JR asked, you know, Vince, you know, as a storyteller, how would you have presented it? I think listening to that for the very first time would have, that's something that I would have been excited about seeing. And it would have been the right way for Brett, for his character and for his legions of Canadian fans. It would have been the right thing to do. It just wasn't the right thing to do for Brett's ego at that point in time. And that's what it was really all about. You know, the other thing I noticed, you know, Vince talking about the situation where Vince, you know, offered him a 20 year contract and guaranteed him a lot of money and then woke up one day and went, I can't afford it because I'm getting my ass kicked by WCW uh, and have been for the last year and a half. Um, When he had to get out of the contract, he made it sound like we can, we orchestrated. There was no orchestration. Vince told Brett that he couldn't afford him any longer. Brett called me and I did a deal. And the amount of money that I paid him had nothing to do with where WWE or WWF was at at that time. I knew what my budget was. I knew what I was facing with the addition of another show in prime time uh, on Turner. So I had three hours of Nitro on Monday, and I had two hours coming my way on Thursday. I knew I needed somebody to be the face of of that show, um, Thunder. And I was well within my budget. To, to offer the Brett to offer Brett what I offered him. It wasn't a stretch. Didn't have to ask anybody's permission. Didn't have to run it up the flagpole. It was an easy deal for me to make, which sounds crazy now at this point, but yeah. 
you, you could see how a lot of people are going to be upset with what you just said about Brett, though, right? I'm sorry. Say that again. You broke up a little bit. I'm st- I, I'm just saying if this was anybody else saying what you said about Brett, I, pe- I think people would be more inclined to just sort of go along to get along. But when you say it respectfully, people say, well, he had creative control. And if anybody who had, knows who had, who, who had creative control, Bret Hart, I didn't have creative control. Yes, he did. Did he have meaningful consultation or did he have creative control? It was said that he had creative control and he- nah, that's wrong. It's wrong. I got to, I want to see that contract. There's only one person. And, and if I'm wrong, please, I beg somebody to sh- show me that I'm wrong because I don't want to repeat something that's that's How, wrong. I can't believe you've never heard that before. That's what this issue has always been about is that it's bullshit. Well, Brett had creative control. Why is he bitching about all the creative that he went along with? What the fuck? It's either, it's either yin or yang, dude. No, hang on. I'm you talking about come out and claim that you have creative control and then bitch about the creative. He didn't bitch about the creative. He bitched about them doing the switcheroo. They agreed to a finish. And then that's not what they did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I'm off track. So Brett had creative control in WWE. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought, what the hell? All right. No, all right. Okay. All right. Well, he, he may have had it. I don't know. I he, don't had know had he had it. He had it. And and they changed the finish on him. And you're saying, oh, he should have went along. He should have did business. He should have though, but because, you, but hang on now, Eric, you gave creative control to Hulk Hogan and he didn't always do what was best for business and what you told him to do. So how can you come on here and say, Brett should have did it, but it's okay that Hogan didn't. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to dig something up that I was, uh, that I hoped would have been buried a long time ago. Look, Hulk Hogan never made a decision. I'm going to set Starcade aside for a minute. Cause we're going to come back to that. Yes. That's what, that's the one that's we're talking you, about. That's what you're getting at. Yes. I so am. I'm going to set that off to the side and everything else that Hulk Hogan did while he was in WCW, while he had creative control was in the best interest of WCW, not in the best interest of Hulk Hogan. He never pulled the creative control card one time from 1994 to 1997, I guess he never pulled that card out of his wallet once. Not once, never threatened it, never reached in his back pocket. Like he was going to pull it. There was only one time that it became a real issue. And that was Starcade. And you can have fun with the tan, no tan, all, yeah. all you want. Yeah. There was a reason why. Hulk made that call. And there was a reason why I couldn't disagree with him. And I'm going to let it go with that. You can blame it on the tan because I did say that he didn't look. Oh, no, no. Listen. Prepared. But I, we're talking about Sting. There was a reason that I couldn't argue with. That wasn't self serving. I know the audience thinks of it that way because the audience is basically. They're watching in their homes. They don't know what's going on behind the scenes. They don't know the state of mind of certain individuals at certain points in time. They're, they weren't there. I didn't like the decision. I tried to, I tried everything I could to overcome the challenge, but I couldn't. But that was not selfish. It was not selfish on the part of Hulk Hogan. It was his best judgment. And he could have been wrong. And it ultimately, it did create a problem for WCW, for me. We're still talking about it today, for crying out loud. It was an issue. It was, it was really bad for me because I had spent almost a year and a half building this arc and building it more. And each and every week, the intensity, the interest, the engagement, within that arc for 18 solid months continued to grow and to not be able to pay it off. I, it, it, it was devastating, but I understood why he made the call halt. That was the only time. So I can be critical. I think 
This was not a decision that Brett made for the betterment of WWE. It was a decision in his own words. He told me it wasn't, he wanted to do it in Pennsylvania or somewhere on New Jersey or something. He didn't want to do it in Montreal because he was a Canadian hero. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know, man. It feels like to me, it's kind of the same thing. What Brett did and what Hogan did. And, and I think there's even more evidence of that. When you take a look at bash at the beach, 2000, and I know that became a legal issue, but Hogan didn't like the creative that was done because it wasn't what he agreed on. And he took his ball and he went home. So it's like Bret Hart and Hulk Hogan have a whole lot in common. Oh, dude, dude. Are you, wait a minute. Are you talking about the bash of the beach where Hulk and I got in a limo and took off together? Yep. And Hogan never came back. That was part of a storyline. But he never came back, bud. That we agreed to, and we didn't come back. He didn't come back because Vince Russo went off script and went into business for himself. Just like Vince McMahon did. Although Vince Russo didn't have the right to do that. We had agreed. Vince McMahon didn't have the right to do that. The, yes, he, he did have the right. Brad Hart had creative control. He didn't have the right to. We know that for sure. We know that for absolutely sure. Absolutely know that for sure. We absolutely know that for sure. It's been well established for decades. Mm. Just saying, they got more in common than you want to admit. 